Okay, back for Zingshu part one, where I actually start using it as an oscillator. Um, so it's, it's in here, I've got it reset to the original values, and I'll hook it up. Uh, so I connect my left to my left output from uh, the main out, and do the same for the right output. Hook the pitch up with the uh, control voltage sources, and the gate as well. So that means that now I am able to uh, to at least get some sound of it out of it, and um, I'm actually uh, only going to look at the standard frequency or phase modulation uh, things that you can do with Zingshi. So at the moment it's just a sine wave, and obviously the uh, the AW, uh, AW Galactic that's on the bottom, the reverb. Uh, adds a lot to the sound, so it it already sounds much more uh, full than a normal sine wave would do. But that's just to, sh to show you that it is indeed just a sine wave. So take this out. So it's really just a si uh, sine wave, and using the attack decay sustain release, you could still do a lot with the overall envelope of that sound, obviously. So if I uh, just turn my sustain down and turn my decay down, then obviously you go through the uh, through all of that um, by using it sort of a self-contained uh, oscillator using those envelopes as well and the reverb. So let's set this back to uh, to the standard settings. So reset all the controls. <coughs> so again, this is just a sine wave. And um, as I already said, you can actually change the pitch, of course, of that carrier in here. And there's a time setting, but since it's set, it continues, and it's getting an overall gate, there's no use in using those time settings at this point. Um, but at least it will give you those values. <laughs> And it will go through that uh, that setting when you use the pitch, of course. And as said, there's a second carrier in there as well. So the second carrier is actually following the pitch of this first one. At, f at first, it's at the same basic uh, frequency. And if I dial this up, I'll dial the uh, overall level down a bit. Um, if I dial this up and change pitch for this, you have uh, those two carriers working together as you can hear and um, the fun actually begins when you're starting to use the modulator as well and that's at the same pitch um, I hope that you're familiar with how frequency modulation works and how stuff like a DX7 works and so actually this is a very very simple algorithm from from a DX7 the main main thing where you only have one modulator and I'm going into two carriers. Um, but as soon as I would start off using those frames, it would actually um, yeah, work a bit like the Synclavier or the Synclavier or whatever you call it. Um, that did that as well because then you can change stuff over time. Um, so first of all, if I just dial in the modulation, so th I've got my, and let me dial back my uh, carrier volume first. So I have this and maybe um, use a bit less of, uh, of modulation there. Um, if I uh, do this and um, dial up my modulator, this is just frequency or phase modulation. There's a slight difference between those two. In sound, um, there is a slight difference in, in waveform that it comes up with. That's not really that important re uh, at the moment. Uh, just go for whatever sound you have or whatever sound you like. Um, so in this way, it's all... Uh, and obviously, I can work with my envelope to, to make this uh, shine a bit more. Maybe do something like this and maybe... Um, 
so yeah you got everything there that you need and uh, as said I get a pen so I can set the panning for all of those and um, as with um, with a DX7 or with frequency modulation and that's the same for a synclavier as well uh, you have this fixed button so I'll first be just focusing on the fixed part I won't go into the modulator or in, in sorry into the morphing part of those um, carrier noise and modulator stuff so I could just dial this mix this modulator in but as soon as I switch any of those to fixed that specific uh, in this case the modulator is going to remain at its original pitch but the, the carrier pitch is going to change <laughs> I may actually maybe better to uh, show the keyboard um, so so you see what I'm doing at this point so you will see that I'm actually it's not going to show you but So this is where the um, the modulator six add a specific fixed frequency, and obviously it will change according to the setting of that pitch. So if I dial this up, it's going to do other stuff than than if it remains at the same frequency. So let's set that back and let's switch the fixed off for this one, and switch the fixed on for the um, for the carrier, and then I have a different result. So a lot already that you can do with just that part, and um, let's switch it back to uh, to, f to the normal standard setting where it will follow the keyboard, and then obviously it does follow that keyboard. It doesn't show me uh, that keyboard here at the moment, but um, I'm not quite sure if I can find another solution for that. We'll try that later, but um, you see that it just follows. But as with the DX7. Um, it's working with the relationships between those or ratios between the pitch of the modulator and the carrier so that means that if I take for instance the modulator setting and switch it well first of all let's listen to it like it is but if I now change this to one octave higher it will change the sound for this to more sort of a hollow kind of thing so so something like a hobo or for Let's put the sustain up a bit so it will follow. And then if I uh, if I dial this up even more, so let's go to to two, so or to three. Oh, that was four. Let's switch that to three. And higher even, let's take five for instance. And um, let's go back to zero with this one and take the carrier and s go down with that. So uh, go, oh, first of all, go up to one, then go to two, go to three. So the relationship between those two is very important. And um, when they're not in a specific ratio, so let's switch this back to zero and let's switch the second one to 0 0.5 or something. Um, so they're off. You get this kind of almost ring modulation kind of things. And that's what the DX7 was uh, was famous for, for the uh, for the bell and, and very clear um, FM sound. So... So if I now dial back my attack and um, uh, up my decay and give it more release, I'm easily creating bell sounds that way. And uh, and then when I start incorporating the second carrier, that can be even stronger, of course, because I can. 
have this and now both carriers are being modulated by this second modulator so <laughs> I get sounds like that, which yeah might be uh, weird, but um, maybe usable at some point. I'll dial this back to to zero. I'll get my pitch back to uh, uh, zero. That was the zero first, and let's dial this off even, uh, because the second or the yeah the second modulation type that we have is by using noise, and obviously you can dial both in, but let's first dial in the noise uh, separately. So if I do that, uh, I start modulating, I don't hear anything happening. That's because the cutoff frequency goes from zero up to 15k. Uh, and the 15k is maybe a bit of overkill, but if I dial this in, uh, where it's at a very low frequency, you actually get sort of a, a ripply kind of LFO uh, vi um, vibration in the signal. And that's dependent, obviously, of the uh, modulation. So if I set this very deep, you get stuff like that. And um, if I set the resonance, you're actually taking just a small portion because that's the quality of the filter, of course, the resonance. Uh, so you make it a very narrow sort of point that I can use. And this is set normally uh, not to follow the keyboard in this. Now it's following the keyboard a bit. So um, that way you have all kinds of modulation um, functions to, to change the sound and the shape of your, um, of your pitch of the carrier. And shape, that's actually what the word zingshi means. Um, I'm not Chinese, but um, at some point I started making modules like the, the DAO, the TAO, um, which which started off as a different name, but then I started using Chinese um, names or, or um, how do you say that, uh, things that describe something in specific. And this is the name for a shape or a form, and you're actually changing the form or the shape of your signal with the Xingxi. So that's why I use it that way. Um, to combine that, if I have my modulation like this, which already gives you a different sound altogether from just the sine wave that it was, and now combine that with, uh, let's set this back to zero. You can really shave that sound to whatever you want by... So that's about it for uh, for this first or f for my part one, where we just use this as a standard, sort of a standard oscillator. So um, yeah, that's the uh, that's all for now, and I'll go back or I get back to uh, the next video where we'll look at using frames. So cheers, bye bye.